Hey everybody, Peshman Gadimi back with another Exotic Car Hacks video and today we are looking yet at another cost of ownership, something that again you guys said you've enjoyed. So I've been trying my best to give you more of these detailed numbers to help you understand what will or will not make sense financially with some of these cars. Today we are looking at my Lamborghini Urus with a matte PPF film and of course an ad personum blue interior. Now you've seen this car several times on my YouTube channel and may be wondering why is it time to go. Well, I'm going to give you a little bit of insight about my over ongoing uh, strategy when it comes to Lamborghini Urus. Now if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I'm not a fan of the Lamborghini Urus when it comes to design. I believe that while it is a very pretty truck, it isn't that special from a design standpoint. I was hoping Lamborghini would really step it up and it really I think shows a lot of its Audi qualities. Now over the years though, I have now owned five Lamborghini Urus's and every single one of them has done an incredible job of being a great daily driver. There are certain things that are very annoying with the Lamborghini Urus, which we'll talk about in a more in-depth review again, since once my next one gets in. So every six months, I have a whole strategy where I buy an Urus and order one. So basically I buy one today, the same day I buy one, I order one, it gets there six, seven months later, I trade in my old one and keep going. This particular hack strategy has enabled me to make 20 to 30,000 on every single Urus I've ever owned and ultimately have a daily driver for six months, that's 300 grand and keep going and keep going without ever losing money. So one of the things that has been really good with the Urus is that the demand has significantly exceeded uh, the supply and it's been even better because good colors and good color combinations typically bring a lot more money on the market, especially we've seen this start skyrocketing on 2020 models and continuing to do that in 2021 models, bringing somewhere as high as 60, 70 over sticker for some really unique color schemes. So what does it mean to drive a Lamborghini Urus financially? Well, it's very rewarding because like I said, with every single Urus, I've done quite well. And we're gonna to look today at the specific functions of what makes an Urus do well. But first, let's talk about options that are a must with every single Urus I've ever ordered and which ones have sold the best. So paint scheme is absolutely necessary and will always, always do well. And other options such as 23 inch wheels are absolutely a must. But this is kind of a cash 22 because you have 23 inch wheels that are incredible, beautiful, and don't need to be replaced whatsoever. OEM wheels are gorgeous. They don't need anything. They're right stanced. Everything looks perfect. Very rare to find except on the Performante and on the Urus. But again, really works. The only issue with 23 inch wheels is while they're beautiful and they are a must for purchase, tires are always on back order. So having a nail in your tire, having an issue with your tire could mean that you're without a tire for quite some time. And this could be a problem, especially if you intend to daily drive your car because things happen on the road. So that was problem one when it comes to the Lamborghini Urus's 23 inch wheel package, but it is still a must if you're going to resell your car. Secondly, having a well-loaded ad personum car does add a lot, like great color scheme on the outside, great color scheme on the inside, uniqueness, but also with severe options like of course the full 3D, ambient light packages, rear entertainment packages, those are the things you don't see often. And as a result of not seeing often, uh, you end up getting a premium for your car. So this particular car had rear entertainment and the only thing it was missing was the cockpit on the back. But to be fair, while I personally enjoy the cockpit uh, rear seating instead of the three bench, I will tell you that the three bench just sells better even though I don't necessarily like it. Now let's take a look at numbers. The car behind me was a $260,000, it was a $259,000 MSRP. This particular car was very well loaded with rear entertainment, ad personum interior, ambient light, and a lot of options, including 23 inch wheels. And it was originally Bianco, which was white, and a PPF foil was added to it for $5,000 to not only protect it, but of course, uh, make it matte, which gives it a much better look. So the 2259 MSRP was what I paid used, used, basically I paid brand new money with about 2,800 miles. The car currently sits at about 10,000 miles, okay? A total of $5,000 was spent on the car, which was on the entire PPF. And then, you ready for it? An additional 15, it was about $16,000 to be exact, was for a carbon kit that was added, which was partly 1016 and partly uh, Vorsteiner. So that is the kit. So the total here is about 21,000 spent after uh, the 259 was spent on the car itself. The car was bought about six months ago and had about 2,800 miles. 
Today, the same car sold for 275,000. Now, here's the catch. It had 10,000 miles. And if I may also say this, the carbon kit was not included. Now, this is important to note because remember, I have a new Urus coming every six months and my next car is an actual pearl capsule yellow Urus, which is really incredible, a 2021. And that car will be arriving at the end of the month. So I sold this car about two weeks before my new one comes in, which is exciting because I'll be able to just take my carbon kit, which consists of a rear diffuser, side skirt, and of course, front lip, and move them onto my brand new uh, 2021 Pearl Capsule, and it will look absolutely striking. So I wanted to retain the kit. This was why the price was lower. I should have sold it for 300K with the kit, 275K here uh, without the kit. So still a decent deal for me to get out. Not as much as I'd like. I sold it to someone I knew, so I didn't, I couldn't hurt them too bad. But here you have 10,000 mile car, about 7,000 mile of free driving, which is pretty incredible. And how did we do? 260 basically in at 265. I want, to, I want you to see something here because a lot of you are gonna say, well, what about the taxes? Again, if you're following anything I teach at Exotic Car Hacks, you know that we have legal loopholes and legally uh, incredibly creative ways to actually not, uh, not pay taxes, but rather structure registrations in a manner that allows you to not pay as many taxes. So in this particular case, we had a registration fee just to be clear, $1,500 on this particular car. This car was paid for cash. So here you have a total of 265, 500 being the cost all in. But what about maintenance? What about repairs? So the Urus is still under factory warranty and this particular one came with three years of free maintenance included, meaning it was part of the package that was purchased with the car. So all services were included and no tires were changed during that time. Tires are still good, so it needs nothing. So 265, five net in, 275 out, which gives me a $9,500 profit, uh, which is, you know, pretty average. Nothing great to really boast about. The main thing about Exotic Car Hacks is it's not about profiting, it's often about just being able to drive for free. And so I take that as an excellent omen when we can say I've made over $1,000 driving a $300,000 SUV. But the way I look at it is basically, there's $9,500 profit for one simple reason, and that reason is primarily because uh, I added miles. So if you consider the uh, normal hack strategy, we usually look at three to 5,000 miles, not 7,000 miles. And in this case, I literally daily drove the car, uh, did well with it, but 7,000 miles later is basically like, not like a lease where you're paying per mileage, but rather getting paid for every mile. So here you're looking at over a dollar for every single mile driven in payment back, which is why hacking is significantly greater than leasing. Now, if you still don't understand what hacking is, remember I've put a free training link in the video, so you're gonna be able to click in the description and actually get a free training for an hour to teach you about why car hacking is significantly stronger than leasing uh, and something I invented about seven years ago or so, uh, which you know will break you down through the training about how to do this. So. The point here, the, the simplicity of the point here is that, you know, we were able to drive this car for $9,500 in profit uh, for just the duration of about six months. Yeah, a little bit longer, about seven months or so, a thousand miles a month, uh, which is fair in rotation with a bunch of other cars. And the next Urus will be coming shortly, which is a 2021. So this gives you an idea of the dollars in, the dollars out. Again, the Lamborghini Urus continues to be one of the strongest FUVs on the market from a resale standpoint, along with the G63, which I also have. Uh, and a Defender 90 that I have incoming, which we'll be talking about as well. But today, uh, here for the Lamborghini Urus, I would say a very successful hack and something to kind of uh, try to duplicate in position. I have done this now uh, so many times over with the Urus that there is a pattern of what's possible with this car. There's a new Performante Urus coming out as well. We'll be getting one of those too as soon as they open those allocations. But for now, for the Urus itself, I think the 2020 and 2021 models will continue to do very well. Uh, as Lamborghini continues to be sold out. And for those of you that have yet to join us, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and of course, click the link and take the training. So happy hacking, and of course, stay rich, YouTube.